Hey, this is Seekelf again. I just want to make a quick video on uh, ways to making your generator last longer. These portable generators, they're notorious for going bye-bye after, uh, you know, if you're lucky to you get 100 hours out of a lot of these little portable generators. This little beauty right here, I picked up for free. Um, just because some genius, let me see if I find it, some genius took the back end and dropped off the back of a truck. I didn't left it on the tailgate and dropped it off. And since the carrier bearing is supported by the plastic right here, this whole piece needed to be replaced. And thankfully I was able to find one on the old interweb. But uh, anyway, and had to rebend back the frame of it and everything. Uh, and I just wanted to go over some tips on how to make these uh, generators last a whole lot longer than they're designed to. Uh, mainly because of lack of service. These, you rarely see these people people uh, changing the oil on these little generators because as you pull it out, you run the hell out of it for three or four hours a year. Then you, you know, you shut it off and you put it back in the corner and not think twice. And uh, rarely ever do any maintenance with it. Uh, my generators, I like to see them serve. You know, see them serviced once a year at minimum. Uh, I just, uh, and, uh, also just to keep track of the hours on that I'm putting on the generator, head on to Flea Bay, or, uh, eBay as a lot of people call it, uh, these little Chinese, uh, hour meter tachometers, you can pick them up for like 12 bucks for free, free shipping. You just have to wait five years, for, uh, for it to get here because it's all coming over from China, like everything does nowadays. Um, as you can see, I added a fuel filter back there, a huge one. Actually, it's, I think it's designed for a Volkswagen or something, a Volkswagen Beetle, uh, and added a fuel cutoff, uh, and you'll see why in a second. But, uh, yeah, usually if, if I'm running this out in the middle of nowhere, and I put, if I put in like 10, 15 hours on it, when I come back home, I'll change, dump the oil, I'll have put new oil in it, so that when I come back, uh, to cut when I come back to get it again, it's ready to go, and I always test fire it before I take it out to remote locations. Um, another thing to look at is while we're actually while I'm talking about the fuel on this side, uh, after I'm done using it, uh, no matter if it's going to be sitting just overnight or it's going to be, uh, it's I'm you know I'm putting away for long term storage, I. I'll plug the uh, sit there. I'll plug the load, leave it running, leave it in the run position, and turn the fuel off. And I'll let it sit there and I'll let it run the carburetor out of fuel. And the reason being is that I don't want the carburetor clogged up with varnish and the low ethanol gas will up so, suck moisture. And I've seen carburetors just turn to gunk just because uh, the ethanol sucks the moisture out of the air and just makes it uh, the carburetor. Uh, crowed like crazy. This this way uh, makes it way better. Um, I had this uh, fuel tank right here, what two gallons of uh, gasoline. I had to sit for almost a year. You know, a lot of people are gonna go, "Oh my gosh, what you know? You guys, you're a complete idiot." But uh, open this fuel back, fuel valve back up. Uh, let it fill the bowl back up with gas. Choked it. Fire off. Let it off. Let it warm a little bit. Pulled off the choke. Um, put my heat gun on for a load on it, 1500 watts, which is actually the rated, this is actually the peak load, it's 1850, uh, which I don't recommend, another thing I don't recommend ever doing, um, and it ran just fine, just fine, uh, and I obviously ran it for almost 0.4 of, a, 0 .4 an hour of an hour when I did that, uh, and it ran just fine, and I'm totally thrilled to death with it, um, Next thing is, I'd recommend, I haven't got to it, but I always recommend taking the little push-button fuse right here, seeing what size it is, uh, and uh, derating it down to like 75-80% of the unit. Uh, I know people are like, are you, you're crazy because you're actually losing capability of the generator. Actually, you're not, because a lot of these generators are, uh, they overextend themselves so that they could, uh, say they could, they give you, they could see, try to say that they're selling you more bang for your buck, which are not. They're just actually doing it injustice. 
by saying that they could actually handle more load than they can. Um, I've seen one generator I was actually trying to load bank to test where a guy had it, uh, it said it was a 10,000 watt generator. You put 9,000 uh, 9, watts worth of load on it and the thing's falling on its face. Uh, and just, it's no, just no bueno. Um, next thing. Next thing is um, the speed. And that little like, hour meter tachometer back there, this unit spins at 3,600 RPMs, which is at the sheer limit of these uh, little uh, Briggs and Stratton flatheads. Uh, but unfortunately, to make the RPMs droop correctly so that when you have you know, 50% load on it, where it's supposed to be, uh, you have to have it, the engine spinning around uh, the frequency around you know 61 and a half hertz to 62 hertz, so that when it droops, you're drooping down into 60 hertz, so it's running perfectly. Um, but uh, I mean, big thing about these is if you're going to run for a long period, long period of time, keep the load down on them as much as possible. Even though it says it can handle 1850 watts, if I was going to run all day, I'd run only a thousand watts, just to keep it you know down low and uh, you know, plus it'll keep the fuel consumption down low. And also, have you noticed how when you look at ads for generators, they always show the fuel consumption at 50%, and they rarely show it at full load. And that's, you know, that's kind of the one of the reasons. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm just trying to convey my, you know, experience. I've had, I'm a general mechanic. I've had done this for about 10 years, and this is what I've learned, um, so far with these, uh, cheapo portable generators. And I've seen a lot of these. I've worked on units from anywhere from 500 watts up to uh, 3 megs. So um, if you have any questions or concerns, just um, you know, respond to me and I'll respond back to you as politely as possible. Which is, uh, I, I don't know how to be anything else but, pl but polite. So uh, yeah, uh, I hope you have a good day and I hope your generator lasts forever. Bye.